Now, in this pattern, we are doing the press lock. The press lock style. So you'll want to have used upper closure B, which means cutting out one accent, one lining, two interfacing if necessary. I've used vinyl, so I've only cut out one interfacing for this piece. So this is our press lock pattern. Follow along with all the steps that say for press lock, skip everything that says for side release buckle. Now we can now we've gone through that. We can start prepping our our pieces with foam and fleece. Now the strap pattern uh, strap instructions are in a separate video because that's just going to make my life easier. So strap instructions are in a separate video. We're going to move on to prepping. So to start off, we just need to prep our um, pieces. So you should have used interfacing on the wrong side of all the pieces where necessary. So my vinyl, I haven't used interfacing. Then we'll start off with going through the outer pieces. So we've cut out foam using our pattern pieces and before basting all i've done is i've cut a chunk off the corners the top corners so i've literally just lifted it back and cut a chunk off this helps then when everything's matched up you don't have all this you know four layers of foam in the corners so i've also done this on both sides of my outer gusset as well. So both outer body pieces and my outer gusset, I've taken the X, you know, the foam out of the corners. Then they can be basted together within the seam allowance. So anything quarter of an inch seam allowance or smaller is perfectly fine. Then all we do, I've left this one, is we trim away the excess. There we go. I've just trimmed away the excess foam from my seam allowance. Now some people like to construct the outer, pick out the basting stitches and then trim away the foam. So if that's what you want to do that's fine. But I just like to quickly get mine out of the way and I know that my machine is absolutely fine with the bulk. So that's our outer pieces foam prepped. Now with the flap pieces, there is a choice. You can either do foam or fusible fleece. It's complete personal preference. If you don't want to use or pull your foam, that's fine. Use fleece. I just like, oh, I, I use foam on everything as you probably guessed. Now with foam and fleece, the thing to remember is the gaps. So on your pattern pieces, there will be the dotted lines to fold back. Obviously, this helps reduce bulk from the seam allowance, especially in this lower flap. So again, I've basted it. I've trimmed away the foam. In the upper flap, there is just a smaller gap at the top. Now, I haven't um, basted the tops together. We don't need to worry about that. Don't worry about that. Or if you've used fusible fleece, fuse it to the wrong side. Make sure that you've got the gaps at the top. Nice and simple, nice easy prep to get you started on. 
Now I'm going to grab my lining fabric outer piece because obviously we've got one main one lining so I've grabbed the one with lining because I'm going to be using that soon and everything else I'm just going to put to the side for a second. So we're going to move on and first on our list is our outside pocket. Now we're just going to grab the one that is made from your main fabric. So pop the lining one out of the way for a second and turn this so you've got the wrong side facing up. We're going to use our outer pocket pattern piece to help us locate these points because we need to measure a mark for both our snap and our press lock centre. So all I'm going to do is line this back up with my fabric. And grab a pen. I've got my marker, my fabric marker. I'm going to draw where my snap marker and press lock marker is. I am also just going to mark top and bottom because sometimes funky things happen. when we're cutting out. So if I lay that back on there, see mine is okay. It measures the same. I had one and I don't know what happened. There was probably an extra quarter of an inch, which meant when I tried to line it up, my snap placement on the pocket was off. So just to check, if we do it this way as well, Yes, they end up in the same place. All good. All good. So, first things first. Take your magnetic snap washer and place it on the top marker. And mark the prongs. Then take the washer from your press lock and now yours might not look exactly like mine it might be slightly different but it should still have a center now i've put this against my press lock and i know that this hole and this hole are the ones i need to mark so just put yours up against it and see where you need to mark to try and make sure that this is nice and level because if you do it like this your press lock's going to be off to help if you need it you can just draw a little line across there and make sure that your washer is following that line That'll help you. There's no shame in drawing lines everywhere if you need to. As long as you've got an erasable fabric marker. So I've got my washer. And my snap. And now I can cut them. So I've got my seam ripper here. Now, important thing to remember, although we are cutting the holes for the press lock, we are not installing it yet. And this is purely because it is so close to the bottom, there is just too much room for error. I mean, if you want to know you've measured it, you could put the washer higher up 
and install it in the pocket that's absolutely fine and obviously still use the holes that you've marked that's fine but as there's too much room for error we're going to do it through the whole bag this adds stability as well which is great so pop this to the side i'll put it up there so you can see that i'm not using it i am using this one and it's sticking everywhere so you've got two pieces to your magnetic snap i'm going to take the one with the indent which sometimes is thicker not all the time because these are the slimline ones out now but you want the one with the indent if you get it wrong way around don't worry it's no it's no stress I'm gonna grab my glue my fabric not fabric glue what's it called fray stopper fray stop oh it does say glue fray stop glue and you want a scrap of um, heavyweight interfacing. I've got some Jacoville here. I'm rubbish with what numbers it is, but it's the thick one. And I'm just going to use a piece of this. This supports my pocket, protects the pocket from the prongs and the washer and gives it a bit of stability so that it doesn't pull through. So now I've got everything in place. I'm just going to transfer the markings onto my scrap. Now if you haven't got a heavy, heavy duty or whatever it's called interfacing you could use a bit of foam, a bit of vinyl, two bits of vinyl, just something to give the this a bit more support because it is just really thin. So, I'm going to fray, oh, if I can get it out. some of that over my prong holes push this through then we've got our heavy duty stuff then the washer and now we can bend these outwards to protect the other side of the pocket so our lining I'm going to cover up the prongs with a piece of duct tape if you haven't got duct tape iron on a square of interfacing if you want but don't iron near the snap because you'll demagnetize it. So a nice big square and you can iron around the edges then. So once you've got your snap in, make sure that you can see, see the holes for your prongs. There's no harm in just drawing either side just to make them a bit more obvious. I'm going to take my second piece of the lining pocket. Well, I muddled up there. Second piece of the outer pocket made from lining fabric. There you go. Don't make this easy on myself, do I? And right sides together. We can sew across the top using um, regular seam allowance. I'm 
I'll just bring this over so you can see. It's the beauty of my little foam mat. I can slide around. Once you've got your seam allowance in place, if you open these up and press them open with your iron, be careful to avoid all this bit here, then refold them wrong sides together. If you roll the seam between your fingers, it'll help you get a nice crisp edge. And then we can top stitch all the way across. So I'm just gonna give mine a little press first and then we can top stitch. Just grabbing my cutting mat because it will help me with the next bit so we've top stitched our pocket and we need to place it now onto our outer lining fabric piece now my cutting mat makes it really easy to uh, line up things and my main one is better because it has got the half inch marks so once yours is lined up just click them together I'm going to base stitch this pocket in place now around the outside edge, not across the top because we want this open. But to make sure that nothing shifts because it does happen if you go all the way around one side, it'll move up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top, sew to the bottom turn it over and start from the top and sew to the bottom now we're base stitching so again quarter of an inch seam allowance or smaller is fine nice big long stitches there we go and our pocket is now basted and if I look at that yep yeah, it's even even Stevens that's our pocket done now we can move on to making our flaps so first up on our flip-flop flap list is the lower now I'm going to take the one that's made from our accent fabric and just pop it up out of the way for a second. And our lining one, as we did with the outer pocket, on the wrong side. I'm going to lay on my pattern piece. Make sure it's all matched up. Take as much time as you need. And I'm going to mark the centre. I'm also going to mark the top and the bottom so that I can double check that nothing funny happened. See, I've got a little bit of extra on this one. Not, not masses, but enough to uh, 
to annoy me. I've just drawn where my excess was. That is our snap washer placement center doodah. And we're going to grab our ooh, remaining parts. So this one's got a knobbly bit. Uh, didn't realize that some countries don't know what a knobbly bit is, but that is what I mean. Doot, doot. And our second washer. So I'm gonna lay mine on, 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 on. And mark exactly as we did before. Mark and cut. Ooh, got a bit carried away with mine there. Careful, you don't end up zoop, cutting everything apart. So I've got another bit of stabilising heavyweight interface in there, or whatever you're going to use fleece, foam. And we're just doing the same process again. I'm going to put a bit extra of that on this time because I got carried away. So put your snap in from the right side. Got a giant hole and I can't get it in now. There we go. Oh, a bit of support. There we go. And a washer and bend it outwards. Now, because mine is backing on to foam, I don't necessarily need the duct tape. But if you were backing yours onto fusible fleece, I would say, yeah, cover it in duct tape. But for the sake of it, I'm just going to do it anyways. That's how I snap in and we can place these together. Now we're only going to clip down the sides and the bottom edge. Leave this top straight edge open for turning. We can sew around here now with regular seam allowance. There we go. Now, before we turn this the right way out, just need to either use pinking shears or cut notches into the curvy part. So I'm just going all the way around because it's easier. Oh, 
I need the rubbish. So pinking shears on the curves or cut little notches out, completely up to you. And then we can turn this right side out. Push out the curves from the inside. If you're able to, you can give this a press. But as I can't, I'm just rolling it so that it looks even and then clipping. Clipping slash throwing stuff on the floor. I'm using loads of clips now because I want to keep this curve. There we go. Now things to look out for. I now have a metal machine, meaning this wants to stick to it. So if you're sewing it this way, be prepared that when your magnet touches the machine, it might start sticking. I'm saying might, just to keep a, an eye out on that one. We're going to top stitch all the way around this time, all around, including the top edge. So I'm just going to change my thread for something a bit more matchy matchy. And then I'll top stitch it and show you what I've done. So I have top stitched all the way around now. So there's no opening at the top. But before I lay this on my outer, I just want to make sure that no funny business happened whilst I was sewing. So I'm just going to grab my ruler here. Let's move, which light is it, that one? Shines on my ruler, there we go. So I'm just gonna line this up. Now follow one of these lines across the bottom edge of the flap. Like that. There is a bit of a straight edge, so I'm just gonna follow that line and make sure that the top is also nice and straight. If you feel like it's run off on one, uh, you know, stretched on one side, then you can just trim a little bit off. Now this one looks quite good. See, I don't know if you, you can't really see it in this light or angle, but I have got some faux leather that will just stretch so badly. So if it needs to, Give it a bit of a trim and we can bring this piece back with our pocket in and then all we do is lining side to the pocket we're going to match up the top raw edges and center it now fingers crossed these should match up if they're ever so slightly off, match them up. Don't worry about the top. It's better that they snap, shuts, rather than this being level, okay? So if you're gonna pick your battle, go for the snap. Because people won't notice that the pocket's off but they will notice that the closure doesn't meet then all I'm going to do is base stitch these together within the seam allowance there we go so actually now I've sewn it the gap 
either on the side looks quite even so that's okay and my snap meets so I'm happy with that that is the one side of our outer completely done I was actually worried I was going to chop off this butterfly but it sits there quite nicely now to do the other side this is our remaining outer body piece I'm just going to pop that up there we need to finish our upper flap so pieces right side together and same as we did with the lower flap I'm going to sew down one side, round the curve, round the bottom and up the other side. Leave the top open for turning. There we go. And then the same as we did before. Trim the curved edges. I'm just going to trim most of the way around. And I can turn this inside out then. Or right side out, I should say. Give it a press if you can. If you can't, you can just roll the seams between your fingers till they look even and then clip them in place. I just want to make sure the back looks tidy too. There we go. And I'm going to top stitch all the way around all sides again. So that is our upper flap done. I'm just going to grab my ruler again and my ruler isn't quite wide enough typically. So I'm just going to have to imagine it or do it that way. Or lay it on my cutting mat, but I think that's pretty straight from what I can see here, so I'm happy with that. Now we haven't finished the flap yet because we need to add our upper closure on. I'll put that up there out of the way. And I've got my upper closure pieces here. Now I like to make sure that my um, the ends are really like even. I think it's the word I'm looking for. I always have a trouble when I'm sewing to visualize where to turn. I always get a bit gung ho and get too close to the seam. I don't know why, I'm very good at visualising where a pocket needs to go. Almost exactly. Just not seam allowances. 
Hey-ho. So I know now that when I put these together, I'm going to start from the top using seam allowance, work down here. And I know at this point I need to turn, turn and sew back at the top. And we'll leave this top edge open for turning. There we are, so I've sewn them together. Now, first things first. Actually, it doesn't really matter which way around you do this, but we're gonna be adding a press lock on the end. And this is super thin, it's not gonna hold anything. So I've got a scrap of foam from where I cut the outers. And we're gonna cut ourselves, I know this is, Keep saying cut out the bulk and now we're putting some bulk back in. We're cutting out a square that will fit, easier to see on that side, within my stitches. Now that's a bit too big. It doesn't have to be snug. So I think that would look pretty good. There's a little bit of a gap round. That looks fine. I'm going to trim that in half because we don't need it too big. So that looks like it would be fine. So I should put that piece by there and try not to lose it in the next two minutes. Before we turn inside out, we're just going to remove some bulk this time by trimming away the corners. And then this needs to be turned right side out. Use whatever you need to use really. I've got my super blunt rubbishy scissors here. You could use crochet hooks, pencils, whatever you need to. Now I promise you it isn't normally as awkward as this. I've got a fold. That's what's going on. I'm going to get my pencil to do the points. Nice corners then. There we go. Got a nice edge at the bottom. And we just get this in here. An easiest way to do this, if you are a baker, then we are doing something like a piping bag. So just fold the top half and then this is easy to push this down in the end. Now I'm going to grab my press lock and just check this. Check that it's thick enough. If you need to add any more stuffing, now's the time to do it because obviously we can't do it after. So just have a look. Mine looks nice and snug. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to put it on yet because I don't like adding locks during construction. But we've got our foam safely squished down the end. Clip that so it doesn't go anywhere. Now if you can press it, do. 
otherwise give it a good smushing clip it if you can if you need it and we're going to stitch now using a quarter inch seam allowance quarter inch if you top stitch you're going to have to go over that stitches again and we don't want to do that i'm going to do this all around so all four edges including the top Now, I made a bit of a boo-boo with my stitching, as you can see there, but it's no worry because it'll all be hidden. So I'm not worrying about that. As long as you don't tell anyone, we're all good. Now, time for a bit more measuring, measuring, measuring. I'm just gonna check if this one is level. Use your cutting mat, use whatever you need to. So I'm just running, make sure that one of the lines is in level with the bottom of my closure. And then also making sure that this top edge is in line with something as well. All good. All good. And I shall bring back the cutting mat this time for our levelling up. So, place my flappity doodle on the cutting mat. Make sure it's nice and level with the lines. Now, if you haven't got a cutting mat, don't worry, you can just measure and mark this. And then we're going to place this on here. I know where the centre is because my centre is this halfway through this box. So if I place this on here, each corner is in line with one of these lines. I just need to make sure that the bottom is even. So as you can see at the minute, that isn't. But that is. So still in line at the top in line at the bottom now depending on what you you're using right now you might be able to just pin this i'm going to take my back off counterproductive and tape it now i will say this sucker likes to move trust me on that one it likes to try and jig about pin it pin it pin it glue it Whatever you need to do, I don't want this to move because mine kept going like this. And by the time I got down here, it was there. And by the time that went up there, that was like, oh, come on. It was a nightmare. If you've got a walking foot, it makes life so much easier. But all I'm going to make sure is, I've just got some clips here. If you're using tape, we're not going to tape past this mark because otherwise you're going to see it. And I'm going to keep my tape inside the stitch lines so that when I top stitch, I don't stitch over it again. Oh, silly me. I don't want to go too close to the pegs. Just for giggles, I'm going to put another piece at the top. I'll have to do that. Take these ones off first. Oh, 
and then we'll line it up once more. So on the cutting mat, line those up. Line it up with the top points and the bottom. See, the bottom is more important to get level than the top. Hopefully, that won't shift anywhere, but I'm just going to add some clips there because I've made probably about six of these now before I realised what was actually going on. My first two are all wonky donkey. Don't worry, me and my scene ripper had a great time. So, there are two ways to do this now. If you want, you can go ahead and just top stitch all the way around. There is no worry about that. Firstly, I just don't like this little bit open. I know nothing can get in there. I know it's really silly. But I always go down and I stitch across and back up. That's just me. So feel free to go all around. Job's a good one. Actually, I'm just going to take those off a sec. I am using the floral washi tape to measure where I'm going to stitch across. Because I like a nice straight line. There we go. So I am going to go down here across and back up again. If you wish, you can go all the way around. Or do a bit at the top and a bit at the bottom. Completely up to you. Top stitch. And there we go. That is now happily top stitch in place and luckily nothing shifted about. Yours obviously might look a little different to mine. Whichever way you do it, it's all good. All I'm going to do now is lay this right sides together. So you want the two main fabrics facing each other. Level this up with the top ed top edges together and measure if you wish to make sure the gap on either side is equal, equal even. If you feel you're worried about when, obviously when we put the gusset on that this box is going to be too big, don't worry about it, you can put this on after. But it should be absolutely okie dokie. I'm just going to base this together within the seam allowance. There we go. So that is our second outer piece done. I think mine shifted a little bit looking at that not to worry actually I think it's the print because if you look at it that way it looks funny but that way it looks fine it's all good all good so we've got our two outer pieces and we just need to add our strap connectors to the gusset. Obviously we need to make them first. So, 
depending on what you're using. I've got three here because I need to show you something. So I've got vinyl. Vinyl can stretch, so if you want to, you might wish to interface it or add a little piece of Decaville or heavy duty interfacing in there. Some people use ribbon. But what I'm going to say is it also depends on how you cut it. So I've got an X on this one, so I know not to use it. This one I've cut wrong and I didn't realise. You can see that's got a stretch. So when I make my lovely strap connector, that is going to stretch to the point where it might break. So I've cut this second one. There is no stretch there. The stretch is that way, which is fine. So when I make my strap connector with this piece, there's no stretchiness, no nastiness. So that one, bye bye. I've got two good ones. So no matter whether you're using cotton, linen, faux leather, cork, whatever, we need to fold these up. So we need to find this long centre line. You can do this by folding and pressing or measuring and marking, which is what I'm going to do. Once you've folded or measured and you've found your long centre line, you now need to bring these raw edges in from the long edges. You can either press this again or we can glue them or use a bit more tape. And I'm just using the thinner stuff so that I know that I'm not going to sew too much on it. Obviously, I'm going to end up sewing on it when I do the seams. But I think that'll be okay for this machine. If you are worried about it, you can always use glue. Or be very clever and try and measure which bits to put tape in, but... That sounds like a brain ache to me. So there we go. One. Two. And then yours will look like mine, whichever way you've done it. Yours will look something like that. One, two, and then all we're going to do is top stitch down all of the long edges. I might need to just change my bobbin, so I'm going to do that quickly and then I'll come back once I've done what I need to do. So I actually decided to be pretty lazy after and I kept my bobbin thread in because you don't see any weights. So I've top stitched down the long sides. All I'm going to do, I've got my raw edges here. I'm going to slide one of these on and fold it over. So my raw edges are on the inside nice and hidden. And to keep these together, I'm just going to baste stitch across the end to keep the short ends together. There's one, so same again, I've got my raw edges. Put my rectangular ring on and fold it over and baste stitch.
So that one shifted because I didn't clip it. Sometimes you can kind of smooth them over. There we go. That's two strap connectors ready to go on the gusset. Now with the ring facing in to the main part of the gusset, I'm going to center this on one of the short ends. Now feel free to measure this, lay it on your cutting mat, measure mark, whichever you need to do, and then we're going to baste stitch this to the short end of the gusset. Like so. It's one done. So lay that on there again, make sure it looks lovely and even. And baste stitch again. There we go. So it's both sides of the gusset done. So we are pretty much ready to rock and roll with construction. All we need to do, whoop, I'm throwing everything, is mark the centres of everything. Obviously, my cutting mat is tiny, so you can lay it on a larger cutting mat and find the centre centres. Now I can see mine from where I cut it already, because with the vinyl I draw a centre line, and then I draw one side and the other. So I've already got a centre line on mine. Now. With linings and stuff, I would say fold to find the centre line, but these are too thick. So again, you can lay it on your cutting mat to measure it all up, which makes it there. Or you can use, grab your pattern piece, lay it on and see where the centre line is again. Completely up to you. How you choose to do it. Yeah, see, the old thing. Somehow my doodad shifted over slightly. How annoying. Do you know how that happened? But that's what I mean about glue, pin, do everything you need to get this sucker not to move around. And now I know I was rushing, so it's possible I didn't measure it properly the second time. That's on me. It's all fine. If it wasn't vinyl, I'd probably unpick it. So, first things first, pick one of your sides. I'm going to shift you that out of the way a second and lay them right sides together. I'm going to match up these lines. And pop a few clips in. And once the bottom is matched up, I'm going to bring this up around here. It's just not sitting well because the flap is trying to fold this outways. I'm going to push that back down.
So once we've done the top bit, just going to turn this over now and ever so slightly push on my outer. And I can continue matching up the curved edge. Don't worry about any little waves. The feed dogs will sort that out. Obviously, we don't want massive wrinkles and folds. Little waves are okay. But if you find you're struggling, you can fold your gusset outwards and then match it over and it will, will fit nicely. But this one isn't too bad. Might just require a little bit of jiggling about. There we go. So I've got a little bit of a fold there, but that's going to be okay. So I'm going to sew it this way. And just kind of smush that in ever so slightly. The feed dogs will sort out any any waves you might have that will help all that ease round. So don't worry. I'm going to sew this together using um, regular seam allowance. I'll bring this over here so you can see it. See what I'm doing. Now, there we go, so the gusset's in place. I'm just going to have a look at how mine sits before I do the other side. Some fabrics sit nicer when they've been notched or had pinking shears. Some fabrics don't mind. See, that looks quite round and I haven't done anything. It's all okay. Now, if you haven't added your flap because you were worried about the bulk, now is a good time to do it. So just lay it on, make sure the gaps are even on either side and base stitch it in place. It's all good. Now, before I add this front piece on, All I'm going to do is, I can see where the holes are that I made in the pocket for my press lock. And I'm going to put them through all of the layers. Now if you put this piece on already, don't worry, you can still do this. That is my press lock holes cut. And then we can put this on as well. So exactly the same. Find the centres. This one's got an extra bit of stuffing on this side because it's got all these extra layers so it looks like it wants to wrinkle a bit more but don't worry don't worry about it like i said the feed dogs we'll sort them out sounds a bit rough that we'll sort them out take care no that doesn't sound any better There we go. 
this one's a bit fiddlier because you've got obviously more to squish so just do it as carefully as you can Now I know I wasn't going to do the any pinking but I might just trim it slightly but I'm not going to trim all the way to the top. I'm going to leave these little tabs because it's easier to open a seam if you've got something to open. Right now I keep getting told everybody says trim all the seams but most likely that your seams are going to stick out if they are little short little stubbies because they can't fold back I'm just trimming it I'm not taking much off it's only going down to about a quarter of an inch and then remember my tabs at the top There is no neatness in this. Ow. Once I've done that, or you've pinked yours, or you've just left yours alone, I am going to, from the inside, find the holes for my press lock now this is a second hand one that I've salvaged off another bag so it's slightly bent I don't want it to be there we go you never know so I'm just going to push that through like so now on the flaps we added a bit of heavy duty stabiliser now we've got the foam here so you don't need the stabiliser but it's up to you if you want to add a bit more oomph to it a bit more security that's fine but in terms of protecting the outer fabric the foam will do that if you've used fusible fleece then yes I would recommend grabbing another scrap marking doing what you need to do but you can then lay your washer on now this is the reason it's going through the whole bag look how close that washer gets to the stitches it can be done in the pocket but it is too close for error for my liking because it only takes one person to not read it and i know we're all guilty of it and then they're going to sew straight onto that and it'll be a disaster. So to save that, we're just going to go straight through the bag. It's right at the bottom, so it's no biggie. Frosh in the place. And these can be quite stiff. If you find when you bend it, like mine, it's gone quite low on this one. This must be a different lock to the one I used before. But if you look at that and you think, oh gosh, don't panic. Don't panic. I'm going to bend it the other way. I'm going to bend them together like so. That way, nothing is near this row of stitches. 
if you want to you can carefully just tap that with a hammer then we need to protect the lining just bring out the big guns impossible to take this tape off the roll without mucking up the first bit. Impossible. Oh my gosh. It's like right dog's dinner of this. There we go. Go. And I can cover all of that. Yes, I've gone a bit overboard with my tape. There we go that will protect our lining nicely so i'm not going to put the end of my flap on till uh the bag is made so once we've at the end of the lining video on how to make the lining i'll show you how to pop this on here okay but as far as the press lock goes, press lock is in, we've trimmed everything up. So that is the outer bag of the press lock done. So now you can move on to the lining video. So any questions on this, ask me, pop me a comment, send me a message, come on over to the Facebook group. But this is the outer. Doo-doo.